Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 31st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Multi-factor authentication is, well, certainly a must these days for cloud services like Office 365. But recently, well, multi-factor authentication has got some kinks in its armor because attackers have tricked victims into approving authentication requests from multi-factor authentication apps by essentially just flooding the victim with requests. Tom now wrote up how to protect yourself against these types of attacks if you're using Duo Security's authentication app to log into Office 365. One pretty obvious method is not to allow the simple push authentication method where the user just has to press OK instead. The user uh, will have to use a one-time code to authenticate. This can be enabled by only allowing a code authentication uh, to be used uh, with Office 365. A little bit uh, in between kind of of the simple app push and the uh, one-time code uh, option is also a verified push. And what this really means is that when the user logs in, the system will display a number to them and then they have to enter that number into the app in addition to approving the login. Of course, the victim wouldn't really see a number that's being displayed to the attacker. So uh, that um, flooding uh, with uh, bogus requests wouldn't really uh, work quite well in this case. But anyway, if that's something you're interested in, uh, take a look at Tom's uh, diary from uh, Friday. And back in September, Microsoft fixed an interesting vulnerability in the Windows TCP IP stack. The vulnerability allows for remote code execution using a fragmented IPsec packet that's transmitted over IPv6. At the time, it wasn't really clear sort of what exact combinations of features could lead to exploitation. Newman Cyber Labs now reversed the patch and released a blog post with details about the vulnerability and how to potentially exploit it. The exploit requires that the attacker sends an IPv6 packet with IPvSec payload, and then that IPsec payload is actually then fragmented. The proof of concept exploit causes a crash and not a remote execution. Exploitation is only possible if the host does support both IPv6 and ESP, so IPsec is enabled. The second is probably the part that you don't really see that often, because even if you're using a VPN, in particular a VPN over the internet, you often use not sort of straightforward uh, IPsec, but of course, certainly possible. And well, in other vulnerabilities related news, we now have a proof of concept code and more details regarding a pre authentication remote code execution vulnerability in Juniper's SSL VPN JunoS. Unlike that Windows vulnerability, this one is actually a pretty easy to exploit. The details are now released by Octagon Networks about two weeks after Juniper released patches. Interestingly, it's a deserialization vulnerability affecting PHP FAR files. FAR files are PHP archives. Uh, The attacker is able to essentially use this vulnerability to write arbitrary files. The software for these Juniper devices is written in PHP. So uh, by unpacking those archives, files can be written into the right location that can then uh, be executed. There are another five vulnerabilities listed in the blog post, again, uh, with details, proof of concept exploits and such. This afternoon, I quickly looked at our honeypot logs and didn't see anything yet. Uh, We'll probably check again tomorrow if uh, something uh, showed up. Raspberry Robin, a worm uh, that was actually originally first covered by Red Canary back in May, uh, 
was a little bit of a riddle because uh, Red Canary didn't really see any uh, post-exploit activity. So that's why they called it just a worm. It just infected systems, usually via shared USB sticks, uh, but uh, didn't do anything else. Uh, well, uh, Microsoft now has an update on Raspberry Robin and uh, it found it now spreading ransomware and other malware. And uh, for example, even Cobalt Strike, and then it saw some sort of hands-on keyboard board, uh, follow-on attacks. Microsoft found that uh, Raspberry Robin is really part of a larger ecosystem. And in a blog post that they published, they sort of mapped out how the worm interacts with all the other pieces of the ecosystem. Not sure if we really should still call it a worm at this point, maybe more a dropper. Overall, great write-up and something for threat hunters to read, to look for specific uh, TDPs and such to look for. So uh, definitely uh, take a look at the full blog if you're interested in those details. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.